Yeah. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. So my question was just, uh, do you think there's enough being done to, uh, to impose sanctions on Russia and Iran in terms of the impact they're having in Syria and, kind of, as you said, to kind of pooling all their forces to Assad's world? Do you think there's enough being done to kind of sanction uh, No, I don't. I think it's a reflection of the lack of seriousness. You know, we talk about we don't want military intervention, but are we using the other uh, pressure uh, tools we could use to affect some kind of peaceful transition, you know, because there has to be a change in the uh, political structure in Syria because it's difficult to expect a population to uh, accept the continuation of a dictatorship that has led to, you know, more than half a million people being killed, where the regime is accepted by most as responsible for more than 90% of the casualties. Tens of thousands have disappeared, tens of thousands are still in the regime's prisons, many are called torture prisons, like said. Naya prison in Damascus, which we you probably know that Amnesty called a human slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. So against that background, you know, it's obvious there must be a political transition or there will be no uh, peace in Syria. In fact, the next documentary we're, we're working on as well in that regard uh, really brings the circle, brings the story full circle for ourselves because it, the wor it's only the working title now. It's Syria, no justice slash accountability, no peace. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't expect people uh, to create a new politics in Syria if the regime that's running, still running a reign of terror yeah. in Syria is still in power. Exactly. Hi Ronan, uh, my name's Kier, I'm a student in DCU. My question just is, like, even watching that presentation, I was getting so emotional, like, how do you, like, obviously there is a lot of emotion to it, but how do you not get so bogged down in it and kind of keep yourself going and looking at the subject? Well, to be honest with you, I find that very easy because, look, I mean, I'm not being tortured. My family hasn't been made to disappear. Yeah. My father is still in, not in Sednaya prison being tortured or was tortured to death. You know, tens of thousands have disappeared in these prisons. Tens of thousands are still missing. It's, they, I think the estimate that the Assad regime are responsible, maybe 85,000 disappeared. But of course, ISIS have disappeared people as well. So have the other groups. But they're a fraction of the amount of the regime. And the regime has a responsibility to its citizens as the state. So when I meet people, I mean, frankly, uh, you know, I feel, you know. Does it make you feel luckier? Like you kind well, of, of course it makes yeah. it does, absolutely. And it's a good way to put it. Of course it makes me feel lucky, but it also reminds me that if I have any self respect as a filmmaker or a journalist, this story must be told. We have a responsibility to wake up our own, you know, people to do something about this. It's like if somebody was torturing, if, if somebody next door was torturing children in your neighbor's house and they were being tortured to death, what would you do? I mean, that was one of our challenges making that film. We were trying to give people a sense of context and maybe a sense of urgency about this. These are real people.